Eddie soldiers. I could say I'm doing this video because I want women to have equal opportunities, when really it's just because I am zealously bisexual and cave easily to peer pressure. Last month for Valentine's Day, we played Wed, Bed, or Behead with your bookish boyfriends that you sent me on Instagram. It's a very fun video, lots of shenanigans occurred, and ever since I posted that, I have had people yelling at me, do bookish girlfriends, you fucking coward! And I'm nothing if not an equal opportunity hater, so welcome to today's video. Now, originally, I wasn't going to make a book girlfriends version of this because men deserve to get made fun of more. No, it's not men that deserve to be cut down. It's the patriarchy that deserves to get cut down. Because women already get pushed down and this was gonna add to that and whatever, but the, you know what? is is my god-given right as a bisexual to also judge women. So I sent out another call on Instagram for you to send me your favorite bookish girlfriends, and for the purposes of this video, sexuality doesn't matter, all right? If you're a girl in a book, you're my bookish girlfriend. So without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, and buckle in as we play Wed, Bed, or Behead with your bookish girlfriends. Let us transition. <sighs> I need a beverage, you know. Delightful. We once again come to the definitive ranking chart of wed, bed, or behead. I'm realizing now I would love to have a category that's like best friend or like best friend that I sometimes kiss. Because with girls, sometimes it's like, I don't know if I want to be you or be on you. And this incredibly strict classification system is going to make me choose. And, you know, as a bisexual, I have trouble with that. For our first victim, I mean girlfriend, we are going to do the mirror to the first boy on my book boyfriends list. I started off that video with Cardin from The Cruel Prince, so it's only fair that we do Jude Duarte. She's fast, she's furious, and she will fuck you up. Little Miss Queen of Fairy, I can only put in one category, and that is, yet again, with her beloved behead. I cannot wed her because she is already Cardin's, although that- actually, no. I was gonna say that's a threesome I could get into, that is not a threesome I could get into. I- I would be dead. Some way, somehow, by the end of that. Bed is out of the question, because that's just more opportunities for her to kill me when I'm in a vulnerable state. So it has to be Behead, and I just realized <laughs> I wrote Behead in Holly Black font. I also learned my lesson from last time. I got a thick boy marker so that I can write names down and you can see it on camera. <laughs> Hell yeah! Number two, because at the request of my girlfriend, so I feel like I have to put this second. And that is not other than Elena Michaels from Kelly Armstrong's Otherworld series. This series holds such a place in my heart. First paranormal romance I ever read, way too young may I add. Wouldn't that be so cute having like a little domestic bliss situation with your werewolf girlfriend? Like she could go out for a run in wolf form and I could like bake a stew over the stove of our like log cabin in the woods. And she could attack and eat any male hunters that come to the cabin to do us harm. I feel like I am nothing if not a loyal partner, so... We're gonna put her in wed. Is that even wed? There we go. It's the nostalgia factor, okay? I'm giving this next character the number three spot because she was by far the most requested girl, and I was not expecting this at all, but Nausicaa Kraken from A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. So many people requested my murderous little cupcake that I have to put her in wet. See, even though she is the scariest thing being person on this list, if she came to me and was like, I'm here to kill you, I'd be like, oh my god, like, stop. Nausicaa could seduce me into the grave, but I also feel like I could ask her to teach me weaponry and then we'd fall in love. The next three are the best trio in their own right, and that is Delilah, Astrid, and Iris from the Bright Falls series by Ashley Herring Blake. Delilah from Delilah Gree Doesn't Care, I would bed. Astrid Parker from Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail, I would wed. And Iris Kelly from Iris Kelly Doesn't Date, I would behead. Oh, we got a trio! Names across the board. Okay, let me explain. Delilah, the saucy minx, I would bed because if you read the book, you know she's always down for a good time. Plus, as two creatives, I feel like it just- we- our personalities would clash. There would be too many ideas of how to do things. We'd have one night of fun in her fancy designer apartment, and I would be okay never seeing her again. Astrid Parker, however, 
Ooh, there is not a lot of things that I would not do for Astrid Parker. She's a businesswoman. She's driven. We learn from with Jordan that like she's willing to change some stuff and she gets a little witchy by the end of it. And I love a woman with drive. You know, she doesn't know how to do everything and that's okay. She learns how to do it. And she learns fast. Okay, moving on. Poor, poor Iris Kelly is going in the behead category. I, I don't actively dislike her. She's just my least favorite of the three. I think it might be the fact that I'm also a redhead ex-theater kid who is a homebody and likes books and candles and has messy relationships with other gay friends. I see too much of myself in here. It's not that I wish her a horrible demise. It's simply that I do not have another category for her. So, sorry, but I don't make the rules. Nextly is one of my all-time favorite characters, and I'm so glad she got suggested, and that is Parisia from The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake. Parisia, my villainous love. I must put in the behead category. <laughs> I'm choosing to behead Parisia because she's dangerous. She is cunning and conniving and absolutely ruthless to get what she wants. She can get inside your head and fuck around in there. There were points in the Atlas Six where she, when she was in a scene, I physically had to stand up and do like a stress lap around my apartment. I cannot handle being in the same room as her. As much as I want her to succeed in the Atlas Complex, I can't put her anywhere else in good faith. Like, I have to behead her for the good of humanity. One of my personal bookish girlfriends that also got an awful lot of attention was Lila Bard from A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Lila was requested almost an unreasonable amount. Like, are y'all okay? This smart, talking, fast acting thief who may or may not be magical, Ah, uh, I'm- the same thing happened with Kel in the previous video. I want to put her in wet because she's cool and I want to be like near her and or on her at all times and maybe like wear that cool headpiece mask that she has. But I have to put her in bed. I don't think she's the kind of girl that would let a marriage hold her down and you know what? That's fine. I want her to flourish as the beautiful magic stealing, magic wielding, thief, pirate, warlord that she is. We could be like Will and Elizabeth from Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Will becomes pirate captain, sails the seas, and then once every 10 years he comes back and then like he and Elizabeth have a night together. Just saying, that is an option. The next two are also two of a pair because of course, y'all said Gideon Nav from Gideon the Ninth by Thames and Muir. See, Gideon is difficult because she's an amalgamation of three things that I love. Swords, bones, and women who could kill me. But in her profession, I don't think that marriage is on the table. So we're gonna have to go with bed. Like, I would do anything. I would do anything she wanted me to. I would bottom for Gideon the Ninth, and I am not ashamed to say that on the internet. Does the face paint stay on during sex is a question I would have to ask. I modeled for 10 years and was in theater for five. Do you know how freaking difficult it is to get grease paint off of you? But of course, if we do Gideon, we also have to do Harrow Harkonnen and Jesus from Harrow the Ninth by Chams and Muir. Was it just me or did anybody else read her name as Harrowhawk and then proceed to call her that for three whole books? Like, why did I pay so many thousands of dollars for my English degree if I can't even freaking read? This is another situation where Harrowhark scares me, so I can't put her in bed. I cannot put her in bed, so therefore, she has to go in bed. If you saw what the fuck she was doing at the end of Harrow the Ninth, maybe it's good that her house is in shambles, because if they were all at their full power, you know, you might not be able to convince me any longer that necromancy is sexy. It's been a few since we put someone in wed and you could not convince me otherwise. Blue Sergeant from the Raven Boys. I mean, come on, Blue. We already share a last name. We like tree magic and have a crush on the same boy. Uh, don't worry about this, this name. I don't, no, don't worry about it. Don't look at it. Nothing, you don't see anything here. Just thought up of a better name to call her. So one second. She's so cool. Her family's so cool. Her friends are so cool. I feel like maybe this is a situation of I want to be her, not necessarily be on her. But yet again, we've established there's no category for this. So we must wed. Top up time. Just a funky, fresh little Saturday night. Me in full glam with a cider 
and all my girls. Okay, I can put them off no longer. We must talk about the vast array of Cassandra Clare characters. <laughs> so many people sent me so many Shadow Hunters, so I've narrowed it down to the top four. Firstly, Obviously, we gotta do Clary Frey from The City of Bones. Now, I'm sure most of you are assuming, because I am Clary Reborn, that I would put her as wet. However, in the situation, I think I'm going to put her in bed. Because, see, even though we share a lot of similarities, I don't think that I could marry Clary because she kind of annoys me in later books. So I'm putting her in bed because we're basically the same person, which, if we ignore all of the weird, like, sister-related stuff, hey, hey, don't make it weird. Do not make it weird. And wouldn't have to worry about getting pregnant. So we don't even need a birth control rune. Man, dating women really just does take a whole stress off of your plate. And like, yes, I know you can still get STDs from dating women, but like, the whole not getting pregnant thing? Stellar. 10 out of 10. No notes. Another one of these Shadowhunter ladies that I would absolutely bet is Anna Lightwood. <laughs> and according to all of you, you would too, because damn, y'all were freaking thirsty in my comments over Anna Lightwood. And honestly, I understand. Women with suits is number two to women with swords, and she has both. Ugh. Like, I know Shadowhunters have a whole religious aspect to them because they are the children of angels and, like, I'm not a religious person, but, like, Anna Lightwood could get me to converse. If God is a woman, take me to church, goddamn. But a Shadowhunter that I would absolutely marry would be Tessa Gray from the... Oh my god. Fake fan. I... from the Infernal Devices series. I don't know who I am anymore. See, this is a situation where being basically the same person works in my favor because we're both two tall girls who love books. Miss Tessa Gray, will you be my wife? Oh my lord. If you want to bring Jem and or Will in that situation too, like I'm totally okay with that. Jem, Will, Tessa, and I can just be a poly power square. No, oh, don't run out of ink now. And to round out our four, we get Emma Carstairs from the... Shit. For real? What are they called? The Dark Artifices! It is so late and I only ate one actual meal today and my brain power apparently is at zero. Emma Carstairs of the Los Angeles Institute, descendant of Jim Carstairs, wielder of Cortana, a sword of the same temper and steel as Joyus and Durandel. I'm real sorry to say but she's gonna go in bed. <laughs> I have complicated feelings over the Dark Artifices series. I like some aspects, I don't like others, and honestly, Emma, girly, bestie, you're like so boring. Everybody else, so interesting. Mark, so interesting. Christina, so interesting. Even um, like Ty and Drusilla from the Blackwoods, they're so cool. Why is Emma our main character? Regardless, I don't necessarily, again, wish her the worst, but like, if we need to bet head her to get like a villain origin story on Christina, I might make that sacrifice. Next up we're gonna do is a sweeter one, and that is Liv from Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. If I could marry every character from a Travis Baldry novel, I would. So obviously Liv has to go in wet. She's strong, she's ambitious, she likes coffee and pastries, and have you seen her shoulders? Mm. She also has a weapon now that I think about it. Yet another point for women with swords. She's going under lovely orc lady because that is exactly what she is. I would fight to defend her honor. Though I suppose in that situation I would lose. But I would still do it for love and for live. <laughs> Tall buff lady who can wield a weapon just wants to retire to a little seaside town and sell books and baked goods. <laughs> Gay. Next up is a bit of an interesting one because this is for a book series that I have not read and that is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. A lot of people asked for Elspeth and I'm including her in this because I really want to read it and I think that's gonna be my next book but also because I was kind of waffling. I was waffling on reading it, I wasn't sure, and then I saw this fan art. Girl, who is she? What can I say? I love a monstrous woman. And as far as I know, it's like she has a, a demon in her head, maybe, and then also like the town's cursed. If we get married, do I get like a part of the curse? Do you like share? curses or like take on the curses of people you marry like 
like debt, whatever it is, I want to be it. So I'm putting her in wed. I literally do not even know her last name and I'm willing to marry her. That is the power of dark magic. Oh my God. Have I not done any of the Lee Bardugo characters yet? A crime is occurring. We got a couple of leading ladies from the Six of Crows series, which obviously has a special place in my heart. So, I mean, let's just go right ahead with the original knife wife, Inej. This is another scenario where I do not think I physically could kill Inej. Like, I couldn't kill Kaz either. Um, I don't think I could just bed her, like, yet again, probably we get a knife to my throat at some point, but not in a sexy way. So therefore, we must be wed. And I know Inej would sooner cut off a finger than put a ring on it, but at the same time, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, like, just a ring. It can just be, like, a commitment, right? Lots of people commit to each other and don't get married. And, like, totally, totally normal, right? Why do you get married now? Why can't you just wait a couple years? until you can afford it, because obviously, I'm, well, I guess the crows are rich now, but maybe I don't want to spend my money at a wedding. Maybe I want to spend it on a pirate ship. Maybe I'll buy her a new dagger. I don't know. I think buying each other weapons is a love language. And then we have the lovely Nina, our heart render. And goddamn, Nina just, she needs to catch a freaking break. And you know what? Maybe that'll be me. <laughs> we can take long walks on the pier and go for waffles and I can teach her how to love again. I love Nina with all of my deep, dark, black, rotten soul. And I would wed her in an instant if she would have me. In a different series from the same author, we have Miss Alex Stern from the Ninth House series. That is correct. I feel like I'm getting high off of the fumes of this. Don't do drugs, kids. And Alex Stern, just like her counterpart, Darlington, from the boys version of this, I'm also going to have to put into bed. <laughs> she could put me in bed if you know what I'm saying. Another scenario of incompatible lifestyles, right? She's part of a secret society. I'm part of too many book clubs to keep track of. She regularly goes to hell. I burn too easily in the sun. Would absolutely love to be kept on speed dial though, so that I could read all of those arcane texts that have like real vertebrae for spines. Like that is the kind of benefit when I talk about friends with benefits that I'm looking for. But long term, feel like it would be detrimental to my health, physically, spiritually, you know, demonically. Now this may be a bit precocious of me, but whenever I date somebody, I wish to be treated like a queen. And a queen that I would treat like the royalty that she is in bed would be Sabrin from Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Don't lie to me and tell me that was not a good transition. Prior of the Orange Tree and A Day of Fallen Night are two of my favorite books of all time. I literally have a tattooed dragon named Sabrin on my chin. Forgot where she was for a second. And I'm sure the two of us could have a great life gallivanting around, taking down the patriarchy. However, again, compatibility, I don't really want the responsibility of being royalty and being responsible for an entire kingdom of people because I forgot to have breakfast today until 2 p.m. Saber and I would be friends with benefits for, but then like the benefits would be slaying dragons. Ooh, next up on the chopping block, very literally, is Wu Zetan from Iron Widow by Shirin J. Zhao. I want to love this woman. And I do. I truly do. However, behead. I respect the hell out of Jay and I respect the hell out of Zaytan. However, um, she scares me and not in a step on me mommy kind of way, but in a like, she literally might take her mech bot and like literally step on and crush and destroy an entire planet if that's what it took to take down her enemies. Girl power. I am actively rooting for her, um, but I would absolutely not wed, absolutely not bed. So, you know, if given the chance, um, maybe for like the good of humanity, I might, I might take a stab at it, literally. We are down to the final three. Cheers, y'all. Girls, 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 am I right? Just, ugh, they'll tire you right out. First up is an easy one, and that is Kira from A Broken Blade by Melissa Blair. And I am confidently going to put this wonderful fey assassin lady into Bed. The Halfling Saga is quickly turning into one of my favorite series, and I love 
all of the character development that Melissa Blair is putting everybody through, particularly Kira, in her way that she is working through her past trauma and her past addiction. But she already has two sexy fey men uh, fighting for her affections. And unless she wants to give one of them to me, um, I'll take the golden boy prince if anybody's asking, but I just can't take the time off of work to continuously go and spend multiple weeks in the fey world with her. It's just, it won't work. Also, she's fighting a war, so, you know, girl with swords won, regular working human who has to like pay taxes and buy toilet paper, zero. The Venn diagram of fairies and friends who kiss a little is almost an entirely overlapping circle. Another woman that I would love to bet. <laughs> My girlfriend's gonna watch this and have some words for me. I just freaking know it. Another girl who I can only put into the bed category is Ren from Bonesmith by Nikki Pau Preto. Bonesmith was one of my favorite books of last year. I absolutely adored this creepy necromancy, bone magic, spirit magic, ghost magic book. And Ren is just so cool. Again, like friend that I would like to kiss. Looks like necromancy's back on the menu, boys. She's a woman with a sword who has magic. I'm somebody who has an egregious amount of bones in my house. What I'm saying is, Ren and I, we could get together and we could bone. All right, thank you, I'm here all night. Oh, my perfectly constructed categorical lines. Well, I mean, design has never been my strong suit, so. What am I saying? I work in marketing. And lastly, we have a thief, a thief after my own heart, and that is Vanya from Little Thieves by Margaret Owens. Very underrated Germanic folktale, Six of Crows-esque heist. She's not all that good of a person, but then again, my favorite color is morally gray, and I love a woman with a little viciousness in her heart. Though she is an adoptive daughter of the gods of luck and fortune, which could be good, yet also might be the two worst mother-in-laws you could ever hope for. Like the am I the asshole mother-in-law subreddit is quaking. But we can't always choose our families, no can we? And I absolutely adore Vanya. So, you know, if she was looking, I would get wifed up. And at our wedding, we could have those cursed two long horses pulling the carriage. Perfect. And we're gonna make it, oh, we just made it. And that. Uh, is that on that? Oh, God, I love women. Here we go, have a nice long look at it. Hopefully that Sharpie did its job and you can actually see things properly. I can't quite tell because my lights are blowing up my vision of my viewfinder and also my viewfinder is very small. This has been me playing wed, bed, or behead with your bookish girlfriends. So thank you to everybody that participated. What this tells me is that I like women in suits with swords. Um, people who read are high on my wed list. And if you have some extra bones lying around, there's a higher opportunity that we will bone later. Um, and yeah, I think that describes my girlfriend. <laughs> I also feel like these aren't as set in stone as some of the, the men's categories were. Cause like, you know, if you're a sweet talker, but you're in the behead category, like I could be convinced to move you to the wed category. Gotta keep your relationship fresh and zesty, you know? Cause like if Kaz Brecker kills somebody, I'm like, ooh, you might have to like unpack that later, you know? I don't, I don't know if that's a stable foundation for a relationship. But then like if Inej kills somebody, I'm like, oh, good for her. I bought this like children's ring to wear as part of this like little costume. Hello, focus, please, please. Okay, thank you. Bought this to wear as part of the costume to be like, oh, this is like cute and funky and like girly pop and whatever. Um, but I feel like this is cutting off circulation to this finger. So we're gonna just, we're gonna wrap this up. If you feel like I've wronged any of your favorites, Maybe we can sword fight about it later. Once again, thank you for being a part of my silly little ideas for my silly little videos. I am ready to change into sweatpants and have a tea and that lemon bar that I've been saving for the last two days. Oh girl, it's a wild Saturday night if I do say so myself. You know where to click to like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day or night wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye.